This has got to be the most interesting amphibian reptile project in the British Isles. And that's because it's the rarest species and also it's an international reintroduction. So I think looking wider, just looking at UK conservation in general, there's not many examples of vertebrate species being reintroduced after extinction. The pool frog story itself is particularly intriguing because we've only relatively recently recognised that it was in fact a native species. So I think all of these things make it unique. If you've seen frogs around, you probably would have seen the common frog. The pool frog have got this very clear green, greeny yellow stripe along their back, which the common frogs don't have. They're warm weather frogs. They really like the sun, so they like nice clear ponds, nice clear areas. They're also um, in the water frog family. It's not very scientific, but I think they're really cute. And um, the call and the behaviour is really interesting. So when the males are calling together, they start bundling together and have a little bit of a fight for the territory. And that's quite fun to watch. Originally, they were from the east of England in kind of fen wet areas. Thompson Common actually was where they were last seen in the UK. In the past, it was always assumed that the pool frogs at Thompson Common in Norfolk had been introduced from continental Europe. People just assumed that the frogs that were a bit of a curiosity, it might be an interesting thing to go and see, but they were an introduced species, so they were of no conservation interest, so nobody was really paying a lot of attention to them. It was only much more recently that the herpetologist Charles Snell began to question the origin of pool frogs at Thompson. That prompted lines of research. So there was four different lines of research carried out. People began to look at fossilised bones. There was also a study looking at the genetics of pool frogs and also a study looking at the bioacoustics that was looking at their calls. And all four of these studies came to the conclusion that the pool frogs that we all knew about at Thompson Common um, probably hadn't been introduced. They were probably a native species and they'd been there all along. Suddenly they go from something that's just a curiosity to something that's a conservation priority. And although the research was conclusive, it came in a little bit too late because by then the frogs had dwindled to extinction. The pool frog is more widely spread across the European continent. The ones we have in the UK and Sweden, they're the northern clade pool frogs. They're at the northernmost reach of their range. They are evolutionary distinct from those on the continent, which is why we are trying to preserve them as, as almost a separate subspecies, because they are unique to us started in 2005 that we began bringing them back from a northern clay population in Sweden. That originally went to a site in Norfolk that is secret at the moment and then in 2015 taking from that population it, they then were moved to Thompson Common so we now have two populations of the northern clay pool frog in Norfolk and that's basically all we've got in the UK at the moment but hopefully with everything going well they will be more widespread in Cambridgeshire and Norfolk and maybe Lincolnshire in the future. So reintroductions, there's always a lot of paperwork, I guess you could call it. So you've got to analyse the risks, make sure you are paying back something native, make sure you're not bringing any diseases over. Um, there's a lot of discussion about how it might impact the habitat and the biodiversity that's already at the place you're um, reintroducing it to. So it's a very well thought out process before anything physical with the animals even really begins to happen. It may seem quite straightforward. You want more wildlife, you just rear a lot in captivity and you let it go. But it doesn't always go smoothly. There are all sorts of problems. Lots of reintroduction projects, even very well thought out and planned ones, have not worked. Yeah, this one's worked in the sense that we've moved the animals from Scandinavia to here. They've settled down here, they've established populations, they've been breeding for many generations. So we're making progress, but yeah, we want to do more of that. So head starting is where you protect the most vulnerable life stages in captivity. A lot would unfortunately be predated in the wild. So we collect the spawn um, from our confidential site. We then transferred it to our head starting facility where we grow on through sort of all the larval stages through the tadpoles and then we release at the late stage larvae before they metamorphose and hopefully give the population a real boost. At Thompson Common here um, we released over 300 tadpoles 
and then at the other confidential site where we collected the eggs, uh, we released over 200. This is the fourth year of head starting. Hopefully, after this fourth year, the population will be self-sustaining here and we won't need to do it again. Biosecurity has always been at the forefront of this project. The frogs currently at the sites are all health screened every year to make sure no diseases such as coronavirus or chytrid spread throughout the country as well as globally. These have unfortunately caused devastating declines in amphibians across the world. With the head starting room, we take loads of biosecurity measures such as foot baths, um, gloves, disinfectant. We even disinfect all the wastewater that we're discarding from the aquaria. And e every measure is taken uh, during this project to make sure no disease can spread between the sites. So it's quite evolutionary distinctive species. We don't know whether or not it might fill a somewhat different ecological role than the common frog, especially because their activity is much more around the May, June sort of time, whereas the common frog is much earlier in the year. You can always assume that if something is there, it is doing something and it is fitting into that niche in some way. And I think it'd be a real shame if we lost this entirely and we never got to know everything we could know about it. It's, it's a very interesting species. It just challenges conventional wisdom. Growing up as a kid, British herpetology seemed in many ways a little bit impoverished. You know, we've only got 12 species in the British Isles, but we've got a very long history of natural history interest in this country, so it's pretty well trodden ground. So the idea that we can have overlooked a vertebrate species as native is, is pretty incredible, really.